All right, so we'll see this question from unit one. Okay, so unit one is having like more questions as compared to the other units. All right, so this is functions of legal process. Okay, what are the functions that uh, legal process performs? So what is legal process? What do you think is legal process? Um, <clears throat> And legal process is like a, it's a process. Uh, related to laws and legal practices. Related to legal practices, we can say it is some processes related to legal practices. So in the court, different processes are being followed, right? Like the process of how a person will be called to the court. What if the person do not appear? What is the second step? What if a person is asked to pay fine and the person is not paying? What if a person tries to escape from the place where case is filed? Right? For all of these, we have different processes. So what functions legal process performs? So legal process typically refers to one of several different things related to law and various legal practices. When we talk about legal practices or maybe filing of a case, when a case is filed, right, there are several different processes being followed. Maybe how parties will be informed that a case has been filed against you, how they will be informed that you need to appear for hearing on so-and-so date, you need to produce so-and-so document, right? A lot of things come along with it. So one of the most common usage of the term is to refer to the processes or procedure which is followed during a legal case. A lot of different procedures are there, right? We even have two legislations to specify the procedures, right? What are those two legislations that specifies the procedures? which are followed in a civil and a criminal case? Uh, there are two legislations we have, right? Or two codes yes. wherein the procedures yes. are uh, specified. Mm -hmm. Are you aware of the name of the legislation? What procedure will be followed in a civil case? What procedure will be followed in a criminal case? We have two legislations or codes. Okay. CPC, CRPC, you must have heard of it, right? Code yes, of... right. yes. Right. So that's yes. nothing but like a code we have all together, which explains the procedure that will be followed in a legal case, like civil case or criminal case, which is filed in the court. The term can also be used to refer to serving of someone's, like I said, how a person will be called to the court, right? Serving of summons, how summons will be served. That procedure is also mentioned. Court order upon a person. How court will order a person to do a certain thing, which is often done by court appointed individual or a private company. This legal process will typically vary from one country to another. So there may be differences on how a person will be called to the court and what if the person do not appear um, with this first summons being served, right? So there may be variations from country to country in terms of this different legal processes being followed. But yes, when a case is filed, a lot of processes are there which are involved. So how they help or what functions these processes perform? It helps in maintenance of law and order in the society. Like we know that, okay, fine, if a person, if a case is being filed, court is going to call this person uh, to appear before the court. If he is not appearing, there are other processes, not like at summons it and summons, warrants, so many things are there. So it may, helps in maintaining law and order in the society. Different legal processes are available to deal with different situations when a case is being filed before the court. Okay, when we talk about different processes that are available for different matters, maybe seizure of property. Okay, might be I have used a gun or maybe a knife in order to commit a crime. 
that will be taken by police officers as an evidence, right? You must have seen in movies and all. When police officer goes to the crime scene, the first thing they will do is collect all the things, right? Mobile phone and stuff like that. You must have seen, right? Yes, ma'am. So that's nothing but seizure of property, right? Then my mobile phone is being taken. Maybe there is a road accident that happens. Police officer is going to seize the vehicle also. Just in front of police stations, have you seen lines of vehicles? Oh, yes, ma'am. That's nothing but seizure of property, right? That my vehicle is being seized. And the case is being filed, case is going on for maybe four or five years. Then I can say that, okay, already whatever you have to do with my vehicle, you have already done it. Now give it back to me. That, that, that is nothing but custody of property, right? Seizure of property as in they are taking it from me. Custody of property as in I am asking it back. That give me my vehicle back. Okay, then there is surety in bail. When a person is released in bail, someone needs to give a surety that yes, this person will appear for hearings. This person is going to help the police in investigation. Imprisonment in default of payment of fine, etc. Sometimes you will see case will be decided and court is going to pass a judgment that you need to pay so and so amount of fine, 5,000 rupees fine. But now what if the person do not pay the fine? Are you going to file another case for that, that this person has not paid the file? No. In the same judgment, court will say that this person needs to pay 5,000 rupees fine. And in case of default, in case the person do not pay, he will have to undergo imprisonment. Maybe two weeks of imprisonment if he do not pay the fine. So in the same judgment, it would be written so that you don't need to file another case for it. Right, so these are nothing but some of the examples of legal processes that are being followed and it helps to maintain law and order in the society. That if court imposes fine, we know that this person is going to pay, otherwise he will be sent behind the bars. Okay, to ensure maximum freedom of individuals. So freedom or liberty is very important for progress of individuals. Right? Individualism also says that let people be free and they are going to take care of other things themselves. So freedom is very much important and is like a very basic thing that we require. So different legal processes like preventive detention, etc. are applied to ensure that people are safe and people are able to enjoy their freedoms. Release of a person on anticipatory bail is another such example. So are you aware what is preventive detention? Um, no. no, okay. So what is detention? No. Detention is like restricting a person, like detaining a person. Okay, when we say preventive, as in you are detaining a person in order to prevent him from something. Okay, it's like you are arresting a person. Usually what happens, police officers will arrest a person only when there is an FIR or police is suspecting that he is involved in some crime, right? Only when a person has done something, the person is arrested in general. But preventive detention says that even before the person commits a crime, if you are suspecting that he might commit a crime under some legislations, a person may be arrested even before committing the crime in order to prevent him from committing it. Okay, so that's nothing but one legal process that we have preventive detention. All right, so there are legislations under that preventive detention is allowed but a lot of rules and regulations are followed in that case that is also nothing but a legal process which ensure that we are able to live freely we know that for these sort of serious matters even before a person commits a crime on the basis of suspicion he may be arrested just in order to ensure freedom to us just in order to ensure our safety okay what is bail Madam, it is, I don't know to explain it. But you know, right, what bail is? Um, but I know. Right? Correct. So bail is nothing but when a person is arrested, the person may be released. Okay, it's like release of a person. Okay, so take, for example, a poor case is being filed or FIR is being lodged. Police officer is going to arrest the person. 
but he can go and say that I will help you in investigations. Why you want to arrest me? Because you want to uh, ask certain things to me and stuff like that, right? I'm going to help you with all the investigation, interrogation, everything. Release me, okay? So that's nothing but B. Now, what is anticipatory bail? Anticipatory bail means in anticipation you are filing the bail application. As in, I maybe I feel that, okay, I have done something wrong, okay? And I feel that maybe tomorrow you are going to file an FIR against me. And if tomorrow you file an FIR against me, maybe tomorrow or day after tomorrow, I may be arrested by the police. Okay, so what I'm doing is today itself, I will go and file anticipatory bill as in it is filed even before I am arrested. Just because I feel like tomorrow you might file an FIR, tomorrow I may be arrested. Okay, so anticipatory bail is in anticipation, just thinking that in future I may be arrested, I already filed the bail application. So that when police officer comes to arrest me, I can show that, see, I have anticipatory bail, you cannot arrest me. Okay. Is it clear? Preventive detention, anticipatory bail? Yes, ma'am. It's like before something happens, only we are doing it. Okay, that sort of process also we have. To satisfy basic needs of the people. So law provides for different legal processes so that victim can seek for the best relief available. It's not like for civil cases, you have one type of relief. For criminal, you have one type of relief. We have a lot of different types of reliefs available. And we can select whatever we want, okay? Like, for example, defamation. What is defamation? And defamation means... Uh, <clears throat> uh, I know, but I don't, I don't know the... the... Okay, so defamation is like saying some false and derogatory false statement. Action. Yeah, false plus derogatory statement about someone. Like saying that this public officer takes bribe, but actually he has never taken bribe. That's defamation. But if he is taking bribe and I'm saying that he has taken bribe, that's not defamation. Okay, so if there is a case of defamation, the victim gets to decide whether he wants to file a civil suit get compensation or he wants to file a criminal case and punish the criminal like that we have uh, different types of reliefs available we can select whatever uh, is best for us okay to resolve dispute by establishing the facts and applying relevant rules of law to them how is disputes are being resolved we see what facts prevailed in a certain case and then we try to apply the law. So law, law punishes a person only when his guilt is proved beyond reasonable doubt. You need to prove it 100% that yes, this person only has done the law. Then only court will punish this person. To prove the facts, different legal processes are available like examination of witnesses. You can bring witnesses, eyewitness. An eyewitness will go and say that, yes, I have seen this person committing the crime. Cross-examination of witness. When witness narrates the story, the other party can cross-question the person. Right? Then summons for production of documents, etc. Court might ask that this certain document is available with you. Produce it before the court. We need it to decide the case. All these are nothing but different processes again. So these ensure that parties to the case are not able to take advantage of any situation. Not like I will just bring some fake witness before the court. Other party can cross-examine. Other party is going to ask questions left and right. And if the witness is a fake one, this witness might give up at the end. Right? So like that, we have different processes. Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. 